my Lord and Savior, my shepherd, my life, your shine. Can we clap our hands for the wonderful lesson? For the wonderful, nice, morbid lesson. That's the, just the morbid lesson. It's the reality check that you lot need to get. You know, sometimes brother soft spoken, he gives Matt the wonderful breakdowns, and then sometimes brother have to just <laughs> man have to just slice through and just let you know. By the way, we gotta remind you lot these are the nations. This is what's gonna happen, all right? So don't get too comfortable. All right, so all praise to the most high. Yeah, so today, um, yeah, I think it's been a while since we've actually kind of um, gone into it. Have you even done a lesson on this? Pretty much how to study the Bible. I think you did like near the, be near the beginning of the year. Um, I mean, there's different ways. There's different ways how different people study the Bible, right? And there's people that you may look up to within this truth or just with general knowledge of the scriptures and stuff like that. And it's our responsibility to teach. <clears throat> But for us to teach, there's, there's literally like a journey that we have to take to be able to grasp that understanding and communicate. Like, I don't trust no one cooking me food if they don't know how to cook. Like, you're not going to wing it and then put my stomach at risk. It's just not worth it. And if the word of life is food, we got to know how to prepare it for it to be palatable to people. You understand? So that's the mindset I want us to have. And just overall being an Israelite in general, I think this is something that we need to take into account. So, I want to go through three scriptures and then I want to convey some points. This is not even going to be a long lesson. I just want to help provide like an infrastructure to people's study, whether it be for the weeks or for the months. Um, and it could be yes, it can be very ex extensive. After this lesson, moving forward, if you have questions with regards to this journey that you that you go on with your studying from this lesson onwards come to me or come to Zachariah like that like, we're going to be available for you that's that's literally why we're here we're here because we also want to shape your direction of studying now we're not trying to control you but you know if you give your child I'm not saying you lot of children so I hope you understand the, the allegory I'm saying but you give your children too much free reign they may end up mashing themselves up mash up everything in the house so we don't want you to spiritually and even doctrinally end up going into places where it just becomes crazy, right? So we want you to have direction and have leverage, like room and leverage for you to be able to maneuver and understand things for yourself rather than just following. Right. Uh, following is good, but you want to be able to, as, as what we say, study to show yourself approved. But it didn't say study for yourself. It didn't say study yourself. You don't study by yourself. That's weird. All right. So let's go. So, I've got a good few scriptures. Go to Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. And then, yeah, we're going to go to, and then also, at some point, we're going to go to 2 Timothy, we're going to go to 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15 and 16. All right, so what's that? Roman, that's it, Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. Yeah. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, yeah. written for our learning. So anything that was written, and this is talking about the scriptures, it's for your learning, it's for you to gain understanding. It's for you to get a perspective of what's going on. Keep reading. Were for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. When you study the scriptures and learn the scriptures, it gives you clarity in terms of the hope that we're looking forward to. And this is the same hope that you've got to give an answer for. This is the same hope that you've got to convey when our people question. We see that, we don't even need to go, well, we'll probably go to it soon, but with 1 Peter 3 verse 15, where you're always ready to give an answer. But I want to, I want you lot to go on a journey for the next, however long we've got left, there's a journey that I want you lot to take, and I want you to really, please take notes, whether it be on your phone or your paper, because I think this will help, all right? So, whatsoever's written the full time is for our learning. Right now, go to go to Second Timothy two. Second Timothy two, verse fifteen, and you're going to read sixteen. But well, read fifteen, sixteen slow. Second right. uh, Timothy two, verse fifteen. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved. Study to show yourself approved. So you got to study to get to a level of approval. So that shows that there's even levels to this thing in regards to your studying. All right, study to show yourself approved. Now you don't show yourself approved to yourself. No one here can mark their own exam. That don't make no sense. Right. You don't take an exam and then mark it yourself. This is why it's good to study with other people. Hold that, actually. Go to Proverbs 18 on, on 1 and 2. And if I'm moving fast, please interrupt. 
Please interrupt, because I want you lot to get these scriptures that I'm trying to build a, pr- a particular premise. So Proverbs 18 and verse 1 and 2. Go on. Proverbs 18, verse 1. Yeah. Through desire of man, having separated himself, seek it into meddling with all wisdom. We meet people like this all the time. Crazy doctrines. The wildest things you can imagine we bump into, and they'll say they're Israelites. And then you say, oh, who do you congregate? Oh, is there other people in Bible study? Oh, man, I mean, I don't like people. <laughs> and, I'm not, I just prefer to do it myself. Weird. You're weird. That's weird. You, we need each other. Even when it comes to studying, we need each other. Right? Because iron can't sharpen itself, but it needs iron. Does everyone understand that? So intermediate for all wisdom. If you try to try, if you try to figure out things for yourself, you end up going into all wisdom rather than the wisdom that the Most High provided for us. Right. You understand that? All right. Now read next verse. Verse two, and it reads, "A fool have no delight. A who? A fool. You're a fool. Have You're a fool. I need you to understand that I'm not saying not to study. Oh, if I don't have anyone to study with, I'm not going to read the Bible. I'm not talking that." I'm saying there's a wisdom that comes with actually studying with other people that can stress test and you can bounce off each other, right? A fool have no delight in understanding because it's always those people that study by themselves and then you show them that mm, that's not quite the way that that scripture is meant to be understood and here's why. They don't want to hear here's why. The fact that it doesn't go with what they're saying is now problematic. We can't be like that in Israel. Even for us who are teachers, we still have to kind of understand what, how people get to the premise of what they believe in. Because it might be some... Look, I don't know. Do you know everything, by the way? Last time I checked, bro, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. So it might be something. As much as we may read, it might be something I have never seen before. Or it might be an angle. You know what? That's quite unorthodox. I want to look into that. That's the type of humility that we've got to have in our study. The brother brought out Proverbs Proverb 16 and 18. And I just so happened to have... Uh, we don't need to go to it, but in... In James 4 and 10 and 1 Peter 5 and 6, both of it is saying, when you humble yourself, he will exalt you. So he will, in other words, he will lift you up. So in the process of your studying, make sure... Hey, Shalom family, everyone on Zoom, could you kindly mute just so that at least there's no distractions. Love you up there. Um, <clears throat> so you want to get to a place that in the process of your studying, you don't want to be haughty and high-minded and think, oh, oh, that's some deep stuff now. Oh, no one can touch me now. I've got, I got the understanding of the four beasts in Daniel's dreams. I got, oh, I, I got, I got a breakdown. For, no, we can't have that mindset. You've got to be humble. Because even when you do give an answer for the hope that we see in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, it also said with meekness as well. Does everyone understand that? So in the process of your study and pray that the Most High God gives you humility as well as wisdom. Amen? Amen? Right. So, because you're not studying just to show people what I know. That's weird, prideful, arrogant, and you're the type that the Most High God wants to judge. That, that's not going to be anyone's portion in this room. Amen? Amen. Cool. Um, yeah, now, you, we, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, I go to 16. 16? 2 Timothy 2 verse 16 mm-hmm. But shun for vain and vain babblings So study to show Oh sorry, finish the rest of 15 You didn't finish that 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Study to show thyself approved So you get to a level of approval Not just based on yourself But with those who you can be around and congregate with Right? Unto God, mm-hmm. a workman that needed not to be ashamed So you're not going to be embarrassed You're not going to be easily confounded You're not going to Think that you're studying so deep and then someone just put a span in the work and now you're... No, you're going to know how to represent this truth properly. You won't be ashamed. Keep reading. Rightly dividing the word of the truth. Rightly. So that if there's a right way to divide the word of truth, that means there's a wrong way to divide the word of truth. And my prayer is that every single individual in this room and on the Zoom has the spirit of discernment. So that you know when scriptures are being wrongfully divided. Because... Wrongfully dividing scriptures what causes so much different denominations. Now we know when Christ returns, there's going to be all clarity of any doctrine. But it's wild out here, folks. It's crazy. All right? Um, now read verse 16. Um, 2 Timothy 2, verse 16. Mm-hmm. But some vain, vain See, when you get to a level of studying to show yourself approved, 
certain conversations you won't even end up in because it's not really fruitful. You know, some people just want to debate. At some point, you just want to debate. That becomes vain babbling. And when you study more, you kind of debate. I'm not saying, I'm not against debating. Like, you need to debate your cause. That's what Proverbs 25 is showing. All these scriptures show that. But there's a concept of, there's a, there's a mindset of, I'm debating to have a back and forward, for, which is not fruitful in any way, when I prefer to have an engaging conversation where we can learn from each other based on what we've studied. That, I'm trying to establish a mindset before you go into this study, before you go any further, all right? All right, cool. Um, so, here's the, here's the verse that everyone must remember. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. And you're going to take your time read all the way to 14. For when, for the time, he ought to be teaching. So we want everyone to be in a position where they can actually teach people near them and around them. Because you're meant to be the light. The light is the law. This law needs to be taught. Right? So there's going to be a time where you can be established as a teacher. But for you to be able to teach others that's around you and share this truth and share this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, read. Ye have need that one teach you. You need again. it. You need someone to be able to govern you in that journey of your st studying. It didn't say one. You know, you need it. Because our mind is, can be chaotic. We can do our own thing. Right? We can, wickedness, you know, you can, you see the spirits that you were referring to earlier. You can have spirits that will subvert your mind from sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to that in 2 Timothy 4 soon. Like, in your studying, okay. spirit can just hop on you and, and now you, you just totally... Book of Joshua. Totally defiled the main understanding of that verse. You need to be watchful as well, even in your studying. Okay. You're doing a ma an amazing thing. I'm now endeavouring to study to understand the scriptures. It seems like there's now spirits that want to hinder that. Mm -hmm. You've got to be mindful of that. Right. So you've got to cover yourself as well. In the process of your studying, make sure you're praying and fasting. Don't be studying the Bible and you're not fasting. Like you want to cleanse out anything from you spiritually and even mentally, that could be a loud voice that overrides the words of the Most High. Does everyone understand that? Amen. And you need to be praying as well. So, yeah, keep reading. Um, so like, yeah. Teachers. So yeah. I that teach you again, be the first principles of the oracles of God. What's the first principles of the oracles of God, family? Anyone? Who said that? Uh, yeah, prove that to me. Prove to me that the oracles is the commandments. And that's the first principles you need to understand. Anyone want to help, sis? Ten, nine, eight, seven. We need that countdown. Go to the... Oh, what you got? I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 2, wait, so that'll be chapter 2, verse 7. You're going to show me that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the law is an oracle, yeah? Uh, uh, you see that? Uh, 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 is the oracle another word for word? Yeah. So God's word is that same word? Yeah, so how do we know that the law is the oracle? How do we know the law is God's word? It, it, it says it in the scriptures. You see this, what I'm doing now? I'm doing it on purpose because I need you to understand the more you read the scriptures is the more scriptures you will then be able to retain. And then you'll know what to reference when we mention, oh, what's the oracles? Right, so, what do you say? Let's go to it. Romans 3 and then also um, Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 and verse 3. So Romans 3 and verse... I think it's 2... But whichever one you decide to go to. Romans 3, verse 3, did you say? Romans 3, verse 2. Romans 3, verse 2, and it reads, much every way. Sorry, start from verse 1. 
so you can get the context. Uh, uh, Romans 3 verse 1, what advantage have the Jew, or what profit is the circumcision, mm -hmm. verse 2, much every way. So the reason why that the Israelites have an advantage is because, go on. Cheap, um, cheaply because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason why they have a certain favour is because the oracles, whatever this oracle is, was given to them. That's why they have an advantage in every way. All right, now let's see. Go to Sarek 33, verse 3. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33 and verse 3. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 3. Mm -hmm. A man of understanding trusteth in the law, mm -hmm. and the law is faithful unto him as an oracle. As a what? As, as an oracle. So the law is the oracle. That is the first thing you need to understand. So on your notes, on your phone, the first thing I need to understand is the law. That's the first principles of the oracles of God. I need to understand the law. Seeing as we're in Sarat, go to 17 and verse 11. And I'll give it to you. Yeah, and I'll, this, is, this scripture is going to show you why you need to realize that's the first point of call, understanding the law. Sarat, Ecclesiastes chapter 17 and verse 11. Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 verse 11 and it reads, Besides thee, besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for an heritage. So the, because the law is your heritage, you need to understand who you are and your culture. That's the first thing you need to understand, your culture. And the law is your culture. Right? If you don't understand that, how do you then be able to give explanations of elements of your culture you don't understand. That doesn't, that doesn't make no sense. Right? So you need to understand the law, the statutes, and the commandments. Does everyone understand that? Oh. And I'm doing this because I don't want you to study so many other deep things and wasting your time and you haven't even solidified your understanding of the law. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Understand how we determine feast days. Understand what the feast days mean and what they represent. Understand how you handle disputes, understand how to handle finances, dietary connotations, like understand these things. Understand the structure that was amongst the community and how, because when you understand this in your mindset, then you're not, we'll all, if we all study the same thing, we'll all have the same mindset of how to be with each other as a community. So we'll structure our community based on what we study of our culture or of our heritage. Go ahead. Yes, just so in, in respect to that, I came across a teaching by Sister Maria about the importance of linen. Of who? Of what? Linen. Linen. Linen as um, a, you know, material that we should wear and use and the healing properties within it. Mm -hmm. And I think um, yeah, um, like, and the reason why she's saying you should wear the linen and the wool together. Um, so I don't know what your understanding of that is, but if, if that if that if that's part of our culture, then, the because you said like they, they, they negatively impact each other. So it was just like those kind of things. I just wondered if that's one, you know, those things are important to us. Oh, I see. You could, you could answer that. Uh, yeah, so that, yeah, that's, that is important. So uh, we'll go to Romans chapter okay. 7. I'm gonna. This is the book of Romans chapter. You said fourteen verse seven. seven. Oh, seven verse fourteen. This is the book of Romans chapter seven and verse fourteen. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Right. So that's why it's important for us to to know the laws, as your brother was saying, because they're they're spiritual as well. So. Even how we address them, um, not having the wool and linen together, man not putting on a woman's garment, woman not putting on a man's garment, wearing the fringes, um, all of these things are spiritual, right? If you're dressing modestly, it's going to put a modest spirit upon you. Mm -hmm. If you're dressing as a harlot, it's going to have a spirit of a harlot upon you, right? If you've got your trousers um, on, on your knees, it's going to put a spirit on you. Mm -hmm. You're going to start walking like this. Yeah. You're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna be an idiot basically. So it's important to know the law because that's the first thing that's gonna 
it's going to build up your spirit. You know, um, when you're how shy, when he started preaching, he was letting people know you've got to repent. Right, repent and do what? Yeah, believe in him. But keep the commandments as well. Right, right? the issue with the Pharisees is what? That, yeah, they didn't believe in him. <coughs> but they weren't keeping the commandments as well. Right, this is the important thing that we have to do. So, I'll be, in, I'll be doing a disservice if I wasn't. Every, every week, you already know what I'm going to come and I'm going to say what we're going to go into. Right? You already know what I'm We're going to go into the Lord. Right? Because it is the most important thing that we first build our foundation upon. Because if you want to know and understand Yahweh Shad, you would have to understand the Lord. And if you look at um, Matthew chapter 1, right? and a lot of people will they'll say, yeah, just go to the Gospels right? and start there. Start in the book of John. Right, if you want to start reading, start in the book of John or start in, start in Matthew. So if you just um, have a skim through Matthew right now, I'm going to see how, how would you be able to understand Matthew. Right, so Matthew is going to speak about the generations of Mashiach Yehoshua, the son of David, of the son of Abraham. In order for you to understand who Abraham is, you'd have to go into where? Where did you read about Abraham? What book? Right, what book uh, specifically did you read about Abraham? It's not that deep, you know. Come on, guys. Yeah, so Genesis, right? The first book. So when you open, when you read the first verse of the gospel, you're reading about Abraham. So if the actual Bible itself is telling you who Abraham is, you have to be um, in the laws and and laws came with Abraham himself. With him came the law of circumcision. Right? So you'd have to understand that by going to Genesis and understanding, okay, circumcision. And when you understand circumcision, you understand how the Lord chooses particular people, sanctifies them, and makes them um, exalted above others. Right? And, and, and that uh, I kicked off of Abraham. And now you can understand what circumcision represents mm -hmm. when you go and understand Abraham. Mm -hmm. So when it speaks about when you read Acts and you read the issues pertaining to circumcision, when you read the issues that Paul had pertaining to circumcision, mm -hmm. now you could, if you don't understand what circumcision is, why it was instituted, what it represented in the time that it was given, the state that um, the Lord uh, blessed Abraham pertaining to the circumcision that he had, you wouldn't be able to understand what's going on in that New Testament. So you have to, you have to go to the Lord. And that's just the first verse. Right, you'd have to understand Abraham to even understand what circumcision of the heart is. Mm -hmm. Right, to understand um, repentance. Right, to understand faith, because our our faith, right, in Hamashiach Shai, right, is shown in righteousness through Abraham's faith. Right, and how Abraham's faith it didn't come from you know, he showed his works, he showed his faith by his works and all of those things that he did. So when we're reading the faith about works is dead, you have to go back to Abraham and understand what he was doing. To okay. actually understand what that even means. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to just be thinking that what um, other people are teaching in Christianity. So that's just the first, that's just the first verse. Right. Going down to, let's say, verse 6, right? It speaks about David and, uh, and, and Solomon's mom. So you have to understand adultery. What is adultery? What is fornication? Because mm -hmm. you can say that it's like, ah, cool. Let's say you didn't know that. And it's like, okay, yeah, Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Arias. So you just read that and think, rah! <laughs> you can just take people's wives. <laughs> right? And bear kings. Right? Thinking, now, oh, oh yeah, maybe that's why Solomon was so mighty. Because, you know, if you commit adultery, you can have a mighty son. Off. Right? No, like, yeah, because it, it doesn't mention that that was adultery here. It. it just it just says that that was the wife. It didn't say, oh, this was sin. You'd have to understand that was sin by going to the law and that what is sin and like, what are the commandments. You'd have to go and understand that. Um, further down, we're going to read about Mary and Joseph. A lot of people there twisted up uh, what happened between Mary and Joseph. Okay. Don't understand the laws behind uh, marriage. You won't understand what happened right, with Mary and Joseph. So it's important that we um, stay and understand the laws themselves 
especially as an Israelite, you know, what we're um, pushing forth is that we should keep the commands. So we want to make sure we are keeping them, you know, as, as much as possible so that we're not in sin and we're actually doing it sincerely and we know and understand what we're doing. When we're keeping the Sabbath day, we know and understand why we're keeping it, what we're actually doing. Mm-hmm. All of the feast days that we're dressing, the way we're dressing. We want to understand that well. The more you understand that, the less contention you'll be in. Because if you don't understand why you're doing what you're doing, someone will be able to combat you on that. And then instead of, instead of being able to um, stand firm in it, you're going to get shaken. And then when you get shaken, you start getting emotional. And you get emotional, you start attacking it. Now, now you're in an argument, now you're attacking someone because you didn't really understand as well as you should have or could have on what the things you're doing actually mean and what they are, why you're doing what you're doing. Right. Okay, very good point. Oh, like, Julie C had her hand up. I thought that she's changed her hand. Who, who, sorry? Julie C, she had her hand up. Really Shalom, oh, sister, sister Julie, Shalom, was there a point you wanted to make or a question? I did, yes. Um, I was uh, trying to hear what Sister Jennifer was saying about living, about clothing. Yeah. And I know that, um, you know, being in the land of captivity, still in Egypt, so it's very difficult for us to, to uh, keep um, a lot of the laws, and they've made it difficult for us. Um, and I was thinking of that scripture where it says that we shouldn't wear mixed clothes with mixed fibres. And you say, well, okay, when I read that, you know, a few years ago, I thought, well, I have to change, you know, everything that I've got. <laughs> with mixed fibres and it's just it's just so difficult to have to get rid of everything else and get, you know, a lot of things. And it's like the brother said that it's the spirit of the law. So we do the best that we can in the difficult circumstances that we're in, but it's it's from our heart, circumcision of our heart mm-hmm. and to follow the commandments as best we can. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanna I wanna prove a point, right? What did the Bible say about the? Did it say you can't make, you can't wear mixed fabrics? Is that what the law said? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I just, I just remember, remember it from somewhere. From reading it somewhere long ago. Did it say certain fibers or? Exactly. And this is what I want people to do. You see that small nuance that is so common amongst our speech when the Bible actually didn't say you don't wear mixed fabrics. It literally said. This fabric and that fabric, you don't mix. You understand? Yeah. You, if you read the law verbatim, we don't want to impose things or impose ideals or even certain rhetoric because it now becomes traditions of men. You understand? So anything you want to prove, you want to be able to, like if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's what First Peter um, 4 verse 11 is saying. So I'm, and that's not even to attack you, Sister Julie. That's a perfect example of showing you can't just repeat what people say you need to actually read it verbatim because those slight nuances now all of a sudden every you got you got mixed polyester and cotton and now you're throwing out all your clothes now you now a sister that have no clothes <laughs> now she's at home and now she has to work hybrid working because the the one that is a hundred percent whatever she thinks it is is in the, in the washing machine and it ain't dried yet and it's ten to nine you got to read it verbatim, all right? And as, as I was saying before, the brother went to Matthew. You can't start, it's weird to start a book from the middle of the book. That doesn't make no sense. It's like when people say, oh, circumcision in the heart, you need to be circumcised in the heart and stuff like that. And they think it's a New Testament concept when actually it's in law. Right. You go to Deuteronomy 30 verse 6, you go to Deuteronomy 10 and, uh, and then you can even read it in Jeremiah 4 and all these scriptures. Circumcision of the heart is literally in the law, but you won't know that Unless you read the law. So this is what I'm saying. We need to make sure our understanding of the law is the foundation of anything and everything before we move forward. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't something that somebody told me, something that I read in the scriptures. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not, I've got different translations, so yeah. one translations would say it in, in a different way than another, so that's probably what that is. Yeah, sure. So, so that wasn't me attacking you. It's more actually showing that it says it verbatim, the particular fabrics. It doesn't say you can't wear mixed fabrics. It's actually referring to particular fabrics that you couldn't mix. Does everyone understand that? If I move on. Diver sort, and it literally says what those um, diver sorts are. 
right? All right, let's move on because of time. So there's websites I can get sent to anyone who wants it. There's websites that actually have the law, statutes, and commandments structured in like, oh, this is dietary law, this is the law about sacrifice, this is law for the priest, this is law about this, this is law about that. That's a good start. Look at that stuff. Read it and rehearse over it and go over it often, right? The Kings, I think it's in, um, I think it's in Deuteronomy 17. Anyone that was a king of Israel, they had to rescribe the law. They had to, re they had to do it for them to be able to learn because that's how they were governing the nation. You as the, as the royalty of heaven need to know that I need to keep going over this because I need to know how to govern my life and my family or those that surround me. Does everyone understand that? All right, so we banged on about the law because that is priority. And one last reason as to why I say to focus on that is because we can debate about so many different topics, but what's the one thing that, what's the thing that's going to get you literally to inherit the kingdom? Keeping the commandments and what? Faith in Christ. So that's the next thing you now study. What does faith in Hamashiach wa Malachi wa Shai, what does faith in Jesus Christ look like? What does that mean? So now I need to study who Christ is, how he walked, how he talked, how he conducted himself, how he responded to the various circles that he was exposed to. That's the mindset that we need to have. And having faith that he's our Lord and Savior and soon coming King. That is what you need to focus on. Law, and if we were to go really deep, Christ is the law, because he is the word, right? Yeah. But anyway, we'll leave that for another time. Law, Christ. Before you even consider anyone else's writings or any other writings in the Bible, you look at law and what Christ said. Before you even look at Paul's, your, poten your potential misunderstanding of Paul's writings, what did Christ say? Because we don't want to be like a lot of these Christians who end up pitting Christ's words, our saviour, against their, with their misunderstanding of what Paul was saying. That's because they don't focus on the law and Christ. You understand? Yeah. So that's, that should be the foundation. Sister Umi, I think I pronounced the name. Sister Umi, what's up? After this, I'm going to be a bit mean and say that can we keep contributions to a minimal just so I can just plow through it. But Sister Umi, you you're going to say something? Do you have your hand raised? Uh, so I'm going underground, so if I cut out, but there was a question about um, just the Ten Commandments that we have to keep or not to keep, and then the other, the other commandments for the laws. Um, are not relevant. Yeah, and, and that's the. Can you hear this? Yeah, I can hear you. You said something about. You said it was a bit. Something about the Ten Commandments and then the other laws and what you don't have to keep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that is quite extensive to answer, but you should be keeping everything. Right, you should be keeping everything. There's a misconception that, oh, Christ came, so we don't do animal sacrifice. The law actually says that there's a certain place and time when sacrifices should be made, literally of animals. You see that in Deuteronomy 12, right? And because we don't have the temple in Jerusalem that we have access to, that's why we don't sac sacrifice animals. When we get to the kingdom, you read from Ezekiel chapter 38 onwards, probably like from 43, you will see that there will be animal sacrifices even in the kingdom. So I'm saying all that to say the rhetoric of, oh, we don't sacrifice no more. That, that we need to be mindful of even how we address that because the law says that there's a time and a place, literally, for that. And we're not in that time, we're not in that place. That's why we are grateful for the sacrifice of Christ that we need. Right? He is our, he's the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Alright? Alright, so I'm quickly going to move on. What day is it today? So what I want people to do is whatever day it is of the month, that's the chapter of Proverbs and Acts you read. The reason why I say Proverbs is because you're taking in wisdom on a daily basis. The reason why I say Acts is because you're seeing the practical application of the children of Israel amongst the nations. You're seeing that. And the type of issues that they had to deal with, especially with the apostles. Right? So you read the book of Acts, whatever day it is. So if, if next, next week, when it's the 17th or the 18th, you're reading Proverbs 11. You're reading... 
Proverbs 17 and you're reading Acts 17 and also the book of Sarah. Right? I want that to be like a foundation. So let's say, for instance, you don't know what to study today. At least you've had your daily bread. You have got something to eat rather than, oh, I don't know what to cook today. Do you understand? So let that be a practice that we take often. And that should be fundamental. Keep studying the law, Christ, and reading those chapters. Everything else after that can, can stem from that. But you need like a, a spine to actually have everything to like the extremities from. All right? Um, so you read whatever day, whatever date of the month it is, you read the Proverbs, the book of Acts, and the book of Sarah. All right? Right, so where else are we? Um, no one should be trying to get into apologetics early. That's after you've established the things I've actually mentioned. No one should be trying to, no one should be trying to get into debates and stand for the faith when you're nowhere near well equipped. Like, don't do that because you're gonna make you're gonna like make the ministry be. It's gonna, it's just gonna look bad. Now they bumped into you. You weren't as skillful. Now, oh, well, these Israelites are idiots because they don't even know how to break down this, or they don't understand this. But you misrepresented this school of thought. You misrepresented this heritage because you thought you were a bad man. And you want to debate someone. And then the Muslim whooped you. And now you say, you know what? I don't know if this truth is right. I might even go to Islam. No, brother. No, sister. You literally was confounded. So please, don't be trying to study to see if you can debate. That's not the mindset you have. That becomes the byproduct later. But you want to do this for yourself rather than what I can show others. We need to be sincere with our studying. All right. All right. Well, here's another concept that I teach. Um, it's better to know a little bit of everything than a lot of like two or three things. So you can have like twenty precepts showing that salvation is only for Israel. Twenty precepts showing why we should keep the law. Twenty, but then you don't have any understanding of anything else. All right, do you know what I teach? Have three, have three scriptures, because remember the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established, right? Have at least three scriptures that you can memorize for every topic. Now, I can get this sent around, the list of topics, and it's quite a lot, but it's the list of topics. If you can learn three scriptures for every topic, you'll be able to engage in a lot more biblical conversations with people. Do you understand? Because we want to represent this thing properly and having a holistic understanding, a holistic um, approach when having conversations with people about the scriptures. Does everyone understand that? Yeah. I don't need to be specializing in prophecy and then someone asks about the Lord, you don't know what's going on. That's, that's crazy. All right. Um, learn the history part as well. So, I mean, the, the best place to start is maybe like the captivities. Learn what happened. You can. Use like external sources to study what went on. Like the scriptures have a lot, a lot, but you can see external sources that corroborate with the scriptures. So learn about the, the Egyptian captivity. Learn about the captivities, the Egyptian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, the dates as well, in terms of what year. The Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Persian Amid captivity, the, the Greek captivity, the Roman captivity, the modern captivity that we have that we're in right now. Right? Learn what happened during that time. Learn the kings that of Israel that was during those times. Learn the kings of the other nations that was part of the perpetuation of those civilizations taking over the world. Right? Does everyone understand that? These are things you need to look at. Uh, you did a lesson here and you went into like Rastafarianism and stuff. You know, people will say, um, they'll go to 1 Kings 6. And say Solomon built the temple and the ark was there and stuff like that. And they think that was the temple. There was two buildings. Right. The temple was actually in 2 Chronicles chapter 3 verse 1. That was not the same building that was made. You won't know that unless you're studying and go through history. Right? Then they will say, oh, the ark is here. If someone's able to say to you the ark of the covenant is in Ethiopia, you've got to think, hold on a minute. I've read 2 Maccabees 2. And during the time of 2 Maccabees 2, it says that Jeremiah... The prophet, who was the one that prophesied about the Babylonian captivity, 
The Babylonian captivity is when the temple, the first temple was destroyed. Does everyone understand that? Jeremiah was prophesying during that time. This is like the 6th, 6th century, right? So then you will know, hold on a minute, there's no link to this with Solomon because Solomon was already gone. He was in 9th century. And, it, and between the Babylonian captivity and the time of Solomon, we had the Assyrian captivity. They didn't do anything. They didn't take the Ark of the Covenant. So if you don't know how to study history, you won't be able to combat people and link the right things together to explain to them. All right? Does everyone understand that? All right, cool. I'm trying to fly through this. Um, because I don't want this lesson to be a doctrine thing. I, I, I'm, I don't want you to ask me questions about what's your thoughts on this scripture. I want you to shape your direction of studying. Do you understand? So this is how I study. All right. Um, and then you can also like customize it in whichever way possible. I'm giving you like a, a, a direction. All right. So when it comes to salvation, understand what salvation is before trying to say who it's for. You know, not a new Israelites will say salvation is only for Israel. Then a Christian says, oh yeah? Well, let me show you this scripture. See, there's other nations in the kingdom. Now you're confounded. Salvation wasn't, oh, who's getting to the kingdom? Salvation in Luke chapter 1, and we see in Psalms 14 and 7, and, and all these scriptures shows you what salvation is. It gives literally the explanation. Just like what we know what sin is, the transgression of the law. Salvation is deliverance. And being free from your enemies. That's oppressed you. And being established in terms of you ruling in the kingdom. That's salvation. Because now they'll pigeonhole you to, there's other nations in the kingdom, so they got salvation. Don't waste your time with that, but I want, for your understanding, that's not salvation. Your salvation is knowing that I'm delivered from sin, I'm delivered from people that oppress us, and I'm now ruling the kingdom. That is what salvation is. So, is the, so that, that's, let's put that as the three criteria for salvation. So is any of the other nations going to be delivered from oppression, delivered from sin, and ruling in the kingdom? Mm, three strike rule, they didn't make it. So I don't want you to get caught out. Some people might say just getting into the kingdom alone is salvation. Don't waste your time with that. But for us, that's what we teach. Right? We, can, we do this topic all the time. I'm, I'm tired of it. But, well, you can't be tired of it. Sorry, God. Um, but essentially, this is what our mindset should be. Understand what salvation is before trying to see who it's for. Because you're just going to be embarrassed. Yeah. Alright? Cool. Um, once all you've done, like all you said and all what I conveyed earlier, then start going into the understandings of stuff like Christianity and Islam. Then you can start trying to understand, okay, the reason why we don't follow Islam is because of this. But also, oh, one more thing. Anything you read, external from the Bible, if it can't be filtered from the Bible, please, don't, don't entertain it. Don't tell me about, don't tell me about the Kebra Negus. The, the, the Kebra Negus has the history of the Ethiopian civilization, and that's how we know that the Ark of the Covenant's in Ethiopia. But that contradicts 2 Maccabees 2 in verse um, 1, from verse 1 to 7. If any, if Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of who? Yahweh, the Most High God. Anything other than that? Mm. And here's how you should structure the Bible as well. I'm going to say something, and I hope you don't understand what I'm about to say. Not every word in the Bible is the word of Yahweh. But every word of God can be found in the Bible. So I'll show you what that means. When it says, thus said the Lord, or speak unto the children of Israel, and the word of the Lord came unto, you know that's the most high speaking verbatim. Anything Christ said, we know that's, he, remember as per Deuteronomy 18 and 18, we know that every word he's saying, that's literally from the Father. So we know that anything Christ said, anything that we see the prophets, when they said, thus said the Lord, speak unto the children of Israel, the word of the Lord came unto, that is the word of God. Everything else is for your learning, but we hold on to those ones. You understand? Because then we start imposing other scriptures that may have been the disciples' understanding of something or their approach to something, but the Most High God never said that verbatim. Right. You need to be very careful of that. I, 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 it's annoying, but this is how people keep tripping up on Paul's writings. Right. 
They, it contra- it's, their understanding contradicts what God said and what Christ said. All right? So that's how I want you to see the Bible. The Torah is literally the foundation in how we function. The Tanakh is showing the kings now using this heritage and this culture and this law to govern the people. And it also has the prophecies as well. Right? So we're looking to these scriptures for prophecies. Right? Then we read the Apocrypha. Which shows elements of the Old Testament, but mainly stuff to do with the Greek captivity. Right? And it's got forms of wisdom based on those people that studied the law. Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 and 6 shows you that other nations are going to be in awe with the wisdom we have. And the bedrock of it is the law and Christ. Alright? So that should be something that we have. We approach the Bible. So when we get to the New Testament, not every word in it. In, in the book of Acts it says, oh great Diana. And they're worshipping Diana. Now, because you see that in the book, shall I now start worship, worshipping Diana? No. And this is the dogmatic approach that a lot of Christians and some Israelites have. The New Testament is literally accounts of what took place around Christ and with those that followed Christ moving forward. That's how you need to take it. So when people say, oh, there's contradictions between Matthew and Luke and this, that and the other... If you're going to give account of something, you're going to give account of something. There will be slight nuances, but you'll be able to find the linear story in what both of you lot are saying. Right. That's why we have the, the Gospels. Look through the different... Like this... Actually, I won't give that example. That'll take time. But even with the woman with the issue of blood, there was different approaches to... Different ways of how they conveyed that story. But you can get the gist of what they're all trying to say. Just because they may have articulated it different doesn't mean that there's contradictions in the Bible. That's not how we approach the Bible. Okay. Like everyone's going to say the same thing because it's different writings of different people, their accounts and the inspiration of the Most High, and it got consolidated into what we call the Bible today. Does everyone understand that? All right. Um, time. But I'm, I'm going to quickly, I'm gonna quickly give, give this. Um, then, once you've sat now all what I've shown you, all what I've said... It's, you're not going to be able to master all that in a week or a month. That's going to take a healthy amount of time. Some people are quicker than others. Once you feel that you're a bit more established, or like even other people, whether it be me or other brothers and sisters, can see, okay, you are quite rooted in those respective things, then start looking at debates. Start watching debates. I, I came into what solidified me. In, actually, let's go to that. Go to Col- Colossians 2, verse 7 and 8, and then go to 2 Timothy 4. Colossians 2 verse 8 yeah. reads, Beware, these day men spoil you through philosophy and yeah. vain deceit. Col- no, start from verse 7. Verse 7? Yeah. Um, Colossians 2 verse 7. Rooted yeah. and built up in him and established, so like established in his faith, in the faith. So you need to be rooted. So you're not easily swayed. You're not easily buffeted. You're not easily confounded by a new idea of the scriptures that's now got you even thinking twice about what you've been taught. Right? And that's why you notice we're, we're every now and again, within reason, within if there's it's done decency and in order, we're open to questions. Because it helps to challenge what we teach and show you that this can still be durable. You don't build your house on sand. You build it on a solid rock. Right? On sure foundation, as the Bible says. Right? So rooted and built up in him. Not in what you think, but in him. And you're rooted. So the plant is not just there to for show. If you go under the ground, you'll see that it's very well established. Keep reading. Established in faith, uh, correct. Rooted and built up in him, established in faith, as he have been taught about it. There. As he have been taught. So what you've been taught, you now got to be rooted for yourself in what you've been taught. Right? In the book of Acts chapter 17, I think it's verse 10 and 11, the Bereans were a set of people where they, they had such a passion and a love for the word of the Most High God when the disciples or when the apostles conveyed it, but still, even after they heard it and they were excited, they wanted to still read it for themselves and study it for themselves. But it said with readiness of heart. That's the wonderful thing, right? You've got to have a real zeal for the scriptures. You've got to have a real love for the word of God, right? Um, what was the other one? Did I say 2 Timothy 4? 
Yeah, read verse 8. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Read, sorry. Go back to, stay in Colossians 2 and read verse 8, and then we'll go to um, 2 Timothy. My apologies. Verse 8, yeah, read. Um, Colossians verse 2, chapter 2, verse 8. Beware, least any man spoil you. So if you're rooted and established in the faith, what you've been taught, you will not be easily spoiled by what? Philosophy. Philosophy. Now, there's nothing wrong with philosophy. The word philosophy is just literally about knowledge, the love of knowledge, love of understanding, right? But there's understandings that are just not conducive and goes against the philosophy or the wisdom of the Most High God, right? Keep reading. And vain deceit. And vain deceit. So you can be easily deceived, right? Go on. After the tradition of men. So rather what man would impose on that word rather than what the word actually says and understand. Right? After the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Okay, cool. Now, what did I say? 2 Timothy 4 and verse... Let's start from verse... 2. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. Yeah. Preach the word. Jump, jump straight to um, 3. Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. So there's going to be people that's going to be so easily influenced by doctrine, right? Go on. But after their own lust. So their own lust. So whatever sounds nice to them. It was in, I think it's in Isaiah where it speaks about speak unto us smooth things. Dictating how the, the lesson should go or what they think that the belief system should be. It's because they actually have a lust for something. Their own lust, right? Read. Shall they heap to themselves teachers? Now, the Bible does say to, in the multitude of counsel there's safety, but you've got to be careful the different people that you're listening to when it comes to this truth. Even amongst Israel, there's so many different doctrines. And you, like, you don't eat from everyone's table. You just know that. Well, we are black people. We're not going to everyone in this house. We don't even get drink from them. We don't know what's in the drink. I'll just, just water, thank you. Oh, t is it not in a bowl? Okay, I'm all right, thank you. Because you don't know what they put in it. Right, so you've got to be very, very careful what people, do, what people do in terms of how they communicate the word to you. Right? Having itching ears. You just want to hear what's convenient for you. You're so caught up on wanting to hear this. I wonder what people believe in this. No, you're not even fully rooted in, in what you've been taught by your leaders or your congregation, but you want to try and understand every doctrine in Israel. That's, that, you're going to put yourself in problems. Right? So I'm really doing this to protect your spirit. Because you can leave and uh, he's not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to watch what I want to watch. But you don't want to end up in mad situations, man. We've met, we've had people who, in this truth, now they're OT only. In this truth, now they're Negro only. In this truth, then all you need is faith in Christ. You don't need to keep the law. In this truth, I was going to say something mad, but I can't even say that one. It's just crazy, right? You want to be rooted in this understanding, okay? Um, go on. Oh yeah, come on, come on. All right, so. Okay, 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 come on. So this is the approach that we should take. So the last thing I want to show is um, when it comes to watching debates and stuff, that's very good to watch because you get to see the stress testing of what we believe. What I say is don't watch any and every debate. It's got to be people that are very well established in the respective school of thought, even on the opposing side. Don't just watch some meaty, no disrespect, some meaty Israelite that's new in the truth and is trying to put scriptures together and he's up against like a, a, is, a Islamic scholar and he's now confounded and now that determined how you see this truth. If you want help in terms of who can I watch, that's great and represents the Israelite community very well when it comes to teaching and understanding, I can give that to you. And we know there's certain people that are profound in that. Right? We've got scholars in our own right as well. All right? Um, I'm going to wrap up A little bit more but I'm going to wrap up So I hope that provides Like a bit of structure to your study Or structure to how you see the Bible Moving forward um, You had a point bro Yeah I'll Go first to First Thessalonians Chapter 4 Verse 11 So yeah man You know when I Go quickly to What people are um, Teaching for like Different, uh, different like 
Israelites, Christians, you know, you may have different doctrines and that, you may see it and you might be like, oh yeah, like, you know what they're saying, yeah, yeah, that sounds cool, but it might, one might contradict another and then now you don't know, you know what to do. So, um, we want to make sure that what we're doing, we're doing it in righteousness and uh, we're doing it for our own edification and that, um, that Job, he said that, you know, you, you know, the ear tries words, you know, as a mouth, like, you know, discerns different tastes. So you want to, you know, slowly digest what we hear, what we read, that is fit to our taste, you know. Can we read that? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, and it reads, and, and ye study to be quiet, and to do your own businesses, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. Right, so, chiefly you have to study to be quiet. You don't, have, you don't study to, to be loud. You don't study to, you know, just get onto, you know, just want to go get onto your parents. <laughs> right? So, oh, yeah, you raised me wrong. You know, we were meant to do this. Right? You don't, you don't study just to do that. Just to come back at someone that, that, um, that said something about you. Right? Or, you know, you, you dropped a little comment. Right, online and then you know they, they drop one back and that now your own the only thing you studied all week is to reply against that Christian or to reply against that Muslim or to reply against the, you know this brother or this sister. You don't want to study to to do that, right? Study for for, for our own for our own edification, you know, and for the for what suits you, man. You know your own spirit, you know the times that you have throughout the week, you know uh, what your schedule is. You want to know what's right for your spirit, so that what you're what you're doing is making sure you're built up in the spirit. You might not be able to study as much as someone else, you know, that may have more time, you know. But what you do with your time still needs to be just as effective, yeah. still needs to be just as productive. Mm -hmm. So someone might have might be able to get in more, you know, uh, uh, chapters in. You might have to, you know, get your chapters in a different way, right? You might have to use. Um, like an audio Bible to supplement what you're doing in order to get enough um, studying it, studying it, right? You can't just only just watch videos, right? Nah, 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 that's off, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> nah, if you're only just watching videos, you ain't gonna get nowhere because all you know is listening to what other people are saying. Right. What you're gonna do is just uh, repeat whatever, whatever you just heard, okay. right? And now you're just saying whatever you heard, thinking whatever you hear is gonna be right. That's not really, it's not correct discernment. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you're, it says to do your own business. Right? Don't just repeat you know, what you heard, what I said, what you heard in a video, right? Don't just, uh, don't just repeat it. Because someone may have made a mistake when they're speaking. Mm -hmm. You don't want to repeat the mistake that someone made when they slipped in their speech. So you want to make sure that like um, the, those noble um, uh, Bahrainians did when they went and they, they made sure that they, everything that was spoken unto them was right and was true. So we want to make sure that um, with the schedules we have, that we're using that time appropriately to make sure that we're getting a word in in the right amount. 